Hi, Dr. Watson here to shed more light on augmented six chords. In a previous video called What are augmented six chords? I shared how you can spell augmented six chords and uh, especially encouraged you to use the solfege syllables le do fi for the Italian augmented six chord, le do me fi for the German augmented six chord, and le do re fi for the French augmented six chord. Le do fi, le do me fi, le do re fi. It rolls off the tongue and it's easy to remember. Plus, by using solfege syllables, you can spell them in any key. In this video, augmented six chords in action. We're going to show you these augmented six chords in actual um, concert literature, uh, some music that you might be familiar with, and you'll see how they uh, work um, in that music. Uh, if you haven't viewed the video, What are Augmented Six Chords? I strongly encourage you to take a look at that first so that you're prepared to recognize the augmented six chords in the examples that I'll give here. Let's start with the Italian augmented six and an example that's fairly traditional, a Bach chorale style writing. Uh, this comes from a chorale entitled Ich hab mein Sach Gott himgestelt, and excuse my German. Um, it's translated, I have left all that concerns me up to God, a typically sacred text. And um, the first uh, version I'm showing you is um, using the C clef all over the place, which is kind of how Bach wrote, but it's also hard for us uh, modern uh, theorists to look at. So we're going to turn to um, how it would appear in um, just treble and bass clef on a grand staff. Uh, many of us are used to seeing it that way. And you can see that it's in G minor, even though Bach only uses one flat. And again, that's sort of an artifact of his uh, modal upbringing. But in any case, he does add the E flat um, consistently. So it's really in G minor. We can see the first chord is a tonic chord in G minor. And let's take an even closer look at it um, so that we can just zero in on where the um, Italian augmented six chord occurs. So it starts out with a um, tonic in G minor um, in the pickup uh, beat, and then it's tonic at the first beat. Uh, by the second beat, where we get the E flat G, it appears like a D at first, but that D eventually becomes a C sharp. That's a suspension, a 7 6 suspension, and then a G in the soprano. That is the Italian augmented six. And again, if you are thinking of spotting it by using the solfege, le do fi, le is E flat, do is G, and fi is C sharp. So le do fi, or um, E flat G C sharp occurs on that second beat. Again, remember the C sharp is actually the root of the chord. The augmented six chords are built on a sharp four, but it's in first inversion, and it's the E flat to C sharp that we call the augmented sixth. So here is our first example of an augmented sixth in a Bach chorale. <laughs> Our next example of an Italian augmented six chord comes from the famous first movement of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. After a series of uh, alternations between dominant and tonic chords, uh, at the first large cadence of the first movement, we see an Italian augmented six chord. Here you're looking at the um, string section from the full score. Let's zoom in so that you can see the actual notes a little clearer in a piano reduction. And again, we start out with a dominant uh, six, followed by a tonic, then a dominant six, then a tonic, dominant six, tonic. But then right before the dominant, we get an Italian augmented six chord. And the Italian augmented six chord serves as a predominant, um, a, a chord that comes before the dominant. In the key of C minor, le do fi is A flat C F sharp, and there we have it. Le do fi, A flat C F sharp, right before the dominant chord G, B, D. And so here is our example of the Italian augmented six chord in action near the first cadence of the first movement of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Okay, let's turn to a few examples of the German augmented six chord. Um, starting with uh, Mozart, uh, his famous Symphony Number no. 40 in G minor, the first movement. Here's the opening page of that uh, movement, 
And um, to get a closer look at what Lado Mephi looks like in G minor, uh, we'll zoom in a little bit to a score reduction. And again, Le, Do, Me, Fi, the German augmented sixth chord in the key of G minor. Le would be E flat, Do would be G, Me would be B flat, and Fi would be C sharp. So we see it at the end of this uh, first phrase um, in sort of a chromatic area, serving as a predominant to the D, F sharp, A dominant chord. So here is our next example of an augmented sixth chord, the Symphony Number no. 40, Movement 1 in G minor by Mozart, listening for a German augmented sixth chord. For our next example of a German augmented sixth in action, we're going to turn to something a little bit more contemporary, right at the turn of the 19th into the 20th century. Um, the uh, Chrysanthemum uh, Rag by Scott Joplin, written around 1904. And um, in this piece, we see um, near the first ending, the keys a B flat, um, and near the first ending, we see that uh, Joplin um, uses. Le Do Me Fi, um, with some enharmonic spelling, but Le Do Me Fi um, being Le being G flat, Do being B flat, Me being technically D flat, but he uses a C sharp, uh, and then E natural is Fi. And uh, so this will be our next example. By the way, in this uh, case, it is serving as a predominant. That's how we expect all augmented six to serve as predominance. Technically, this one actually is followed by um, a tonic six four, and then it goes to the dominant. So um, it's, a, it's as we'd expect it to happen, even though it's a little bit more popular music. So here is Joplin's Chrysanthemum listening for the German augmented six chord. Let me offer one more German augmented six example in the 20th century. And the example I've picked is um, sort of an unusual uh, use. It's Henry Mancini's theme from the Pink Panther movies, the Pink Panther. And you'll hear in the key of E minor, a Le Do Me Fi, which is C, E natural, G, would be A sharp, but he uses N harmonically B flat. Um, and spells a German augmented six chord. The reason this is unusual is it doesn't appear actually as a predominant. It just sort of ends the phrase on that German augmented six chord. But it, again, we clearly see that Le Do Me Fi happening at the end of the phrase. So here is our last example of a German augmented six chord in the music of Henry Mancini from his theme to the movie The Pink Panther. <laughs> We cannot end this augmented six chord in action video without an example of the French augmented six chord in action. And for this one, I've chosen Beethoven's Piano Sonata Number no. 4, Opus 7. Uh, the piece is in E flat, but it's the second movement, Largo, which is in C major. And so uh, in measure 77, we find an example of the augmented six chord, the French augmented six chord. Uh, we're looking for Le Do, Re, Fi. And so we find. A, uh, a flat, C, D, and F sharp occurring just before measure 78 uh, occurs. It's setting it up, uh, setting up a dominant, so it's serving as a predominant. And so this will be our last example for this video, the French augmented six chord in Beethoven's Piano Sonata Number no. 4, Opus 7, Second Movement Largo in measure 77. Well, now that you've seen the augmented six chords in action, hopefully you'll be more comfortable spelling them and spotting them when you analyze music.
The one question that I haven't addressed, and it's kind of hard to answer, is the question about the geographical uh, labels that are assigned to these, you know, the Italian, the German, and the French augmented six chord. It's especially confusing when you think about the examples I've uh, presented, uh, German composers such as Bach using the Italian augmented six, American composers like Scott Joplin and Henry Mancini using the German augmented six, and uh, Germanic Austrian composer Beethoven using the French augmented six. The short answer is simply tradition. Music theory has a lot of those, and that's about all the time we have to say about that. Also, remember those solfege labels, Lado Fi, Lado Mefi, and Lado Refi, that flow so easily off the tongue. Lado Fi, Lado Mefi, Lado Refi. That's the easiest way to remember those um, uh, augmented six chord spellings when you spot them in music. I couldn't commend that uh, to you highly enough. Anyway, until next time. Uh, this is Dr. Scott Watson wishing you the very best in all of your music theory escapades. Music